Here are three health habits I wish I started in my 20s. Number one, eating my body weight in grams of protein from whole foods on a consistent basis. Number two, get eight hours of sleep every single night. And number three, realizing that supplements really play a minor role at best when it comes to my fitness, muscle building, and fat loss. Had I done those three things in my 20s, I would have gotten a lot further when it came to my fitness. Have you really learned all three of those? Oh, protein, yes. Sleep, definitely. Supplements, maybe not. <laughs> that's Actually, the, I know the answer. That's what I was looking for. Right I actually there. know the answer to the supplements. I eat my body weight. <laughs> I just, just have fun with them. Uh, no, I mean, uh, imagine hitting just first one, right? Yeah, yeah. Just hitting protein targets from whole natural foods it was consistently. It was yeah. It, it's like, I, I remember one, it's so funny. I just talked about this recently. I was when I was um, maybe 14 years old. So I was a young teen. I had just got into lifting weights, maybe 15. So maybe a year into it. Um, and, you know, skinny, trying to build muscle, whole deal. And my parents went on vacation for three weeks. So we lived with my grandparents for the few weeks. Now my grandmother, old school, uh, Sicilian, and so, of course, first thing she asked me is, what do you like it to eat? <laughs> you know, so I said, now I just got into lifting weights. So I said, I like steak. Steak, grandma, steak. Yeah, I yeah. like steak, no, no. And um, so she proceeded to make me steak three times a day. Breakfast, <laughs> lunch, and dinner. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So and I remember over a three-week period, like I built so much muscle and I got so strong. And I remember being like, is it the steak? Could it possibly? It was. It was a steak. Mm -hmm. It definitely mm -hmm. was. You know, for me, the same thing, except uh, not the same story with the grandma, but what was interesting was when I was really young, skinny, trying to build muscle, uh, the message I kept hearing and thinking was, I just need to eat more. I need more calories. Oh, yeah. And so this is, I was still eating fast food all the time. Mm -hmm. Like I ate junk food all the time. It was just food. Yeah, it was just food. And so I thought, you know, oh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm gotta be getting enough calories or, you know, throwing milkshakes. I mean, throwing mm -hmm. ice, everything just to eat more calories to put weight on. And I was such a skinny kid that at that point I was like, I'll take any weight, you know, <laughs> as long as I saw the scale go up. And it wasn't until I started like tracking macros and paying attention and realizing like, oh my God, I am getting enough calories to put a couple pounds on the scale, but I'm still grossly under eating protein. Right. Mm -hmm. And it w it tripped me out when I started eating whole foods and going after things like chicken thighs and, and like steak and at whole food. And, and I found myself uh, hungry. I wanted to eat more because this, this clean food, you just tell by the way it was being digested. Like I'd eat a, a real healthy breakfast and then two hours later I want to eat again. Whereas if I crushed like fast food, if I went through my favorite, you know, fast food burrito place for breakfast, I'd eat and then I didn't want to eat till like four o'clock yeah. in the afternoon. Then I'd eat another junk food meal and then I didn't want to eat yeah. till- It's like you'd have, you you would eat 1500 calories, 30 grams of protein. Yeah. yeah. You know, so just a bunch of, bunch of garbage yes. calories without the protein. Dude, and that was, uh, I mean, it's interesting to go back and think about that. It really was just like mass gainer. It's like whatever amount of calories you can just cram down and so i was just like seeking out shakes on top of what i was already eating normally i thought that was like the move right yep. and it was like the primarily carbohydrates there wasn't a whole lot of uh, protein no in there. it was uh, you know mega you know, mass 4000 or something it was like it was like 180 grams of carbs right? yeah 40 grams of protein right 880 grams of carbs that's really all the all the calories i mean uh there's a couple times when i almost really figured this out like had you asked me i would have said yes but I didn't really apply it, right? So the first time that it started to click was when designer whey. Do you guys remember that protein? Mm -hmm. it was like, that was like the first whey protein they came I out. Remember I told you I used to mix it. That's right. That's right. You worked in the factory. Mm -hmm. um, and I started just taking a scoop with every meal and then noticing the gains. I thought there was something special about whey protein, but really it's just I needed yeah. extra protein. My late 20s is when I started to really piece this together. I uh, It was the first time I really started to track. And so my late 20s, you know, I've been, now I've been lifting weights for over a decade and I wanted to gain more muscle. And so I said, okay, I'm going to aim for 220 grams of protein a day. So breakfast, I'll never forget. I need 50 grams of protein for breakfast and I'm going to do it without a shake. And I remember going through the foods I was eating and going, okay, I have to eat that many eggs. Like that's a lot. Of, I've never done that before. And I have to eat this much. That is a lot of protein. I thought I was eating <clears throat> enough protein before. I was probably getting more like 120 grams of protein before. Yeah nowhere near the 200 and 220. And then when I did, uh, those were some of the best uh, strength and muscle gains I'd ever seen in my entire life, ever. I mean, th th some of those lifts are still some of my PRs. There's also this like, you, again, you in similar to the point you're making is that you have like a day or two that you do well. 
and then you you don't it's consistent. You yeah, gotta be consistent. That's the key. It's not like you can't just have a high protein day and then you have three days that are moderate or low. I said you that, and so I noticed that pattern too. It was like. Oh, well, I, that was a good day of protein, but it's like, oh, that was no. one out of the four days that I actually load hit. up and kind of back off. Oh, way, and, way back. And, off. And now this, the second, and that's that's a huge like when I whenever I work with anybody in their twenties, protein intake always. Uh, it's actually that's for true for everybody, yeah. but especially kids in the twenties. The second one, the sleep one. This one, ten out of ten times, if I'm working with someone in their twenties, their sleep is suboptimal, and the reason for this is you can get away with suboptimal sleep when you're in your 20s for a couple reasons. One, you're young, so you're like yeah. super resilient. Number two, you have the luxury of being able to take naps and sleeping in. Right? So <laughs> You just don't have as many responsibilities. Yeah, that's it. Like like once you start having kids and all that stuff, like it's like you can't just take a nap and cra you, you can't crash on the couch after getting home from school and, and that'll help you kind of function. You just can't do that. You got your kids, you got responsibilities. And you also can't sleep in on the weekend. Everybody knows this who has kids. You kids don't sleep in. So, but in my twenties, I could, I could sleep until 10 AM, 11 AM if, if I wanted to. And so you kind of play this like catch up, uh, you know, game and, and you can tolerate it, not realizing the gains that you're missing, not realizing the progress that you're missing, um, by simply not sleeping eight hours consistently. Almost every 20 something year old I know goes to bed really late Friday and Saturday night. Mm -hmm. Just at least Friday and Saturday night, they stay up super late. Jet lags himself every Monday, and then they and then, and, and then they try to go to bed early on Sunday. Can't get to sleep because they've already changed their circadian rhythm from the late, you know, uh, bedtime and late sleep in. Then Monday, exactly, Adam. They they wake up Monday morning. Everybody hates Monday morning. Well, yeah, because you've literally changed your circadian rhythm. So you're jet lagging yourself every single week. Week in a week out, you don't normalize till about Tuesday or Wednesday, and that's when you things start to feel Dude, normal. And you throw it off. Again. Honestly, I feel like it's worse. I don't know if you agree or not, but like with the kids, in terms of them staying up, like they do all nighters, yes, like all the time, and it's yeah. like yes. because there's no real like you know when TV had schedule where it's like you have this show is on at this time and this. Like they don't have any schedule. And so it's like they just will play video games or they'll watch something or stream or mm -hmm. like everything is readily available and accessible. And so it's like, why well, go to bed? Like we're just hanging out. Let's stay up and let's that it's like exciting for them yeah. to just stay up. And I'm like, oh my God, it's like it, a look, nightmare. So if you want to progress, if you want progress, if you're really after progress, uh, then you gotta get consistent good sleep. If you don't care, then yeah, go enjoy staying up late and all that stuff. But if you really want to progress and you're not getting good sleep and you're doing that patchwork uh, like I did, you're you're not just affecting yourself a little bit. You're crippling killing, your progress. You're killing it's your games. What's, so I'm going to add to this too because I think there's another thing that we did in our early 20s that like goes hand in hand with uh, the sleep thing. Part of uh, you know what happens when you sleep. This is the this is the recovery building process and adapting process. Yeah. Is when we're resting and recovering. So then you, then you add in the other factor that we would do in our twenties, which is double days, training to failure every <laughs> set. And so it's a wonder I built any muscle in my twenties at all. And I think back like, oh my god, if I the amount of effort I put in <laughs> to trying to build a few pounds of muscle and grinding and pushing through all these things so hard for somebody just to get a few more pounds. I think back and I'm like, oh my God, it could have been so much easier had I dialed in the mm -hmm. sleep or, or even just cared a little bit about it, right? I just, I had the attitude of like, I'll sleep when I'm dead, right? And like sleep is overrated. All I said, all that dumb stuff. So if I just kind of cared about that and probably cut my volume and intensity in half, I would have seen double the results just simply by understanding the the response how response the, the responsibility of getting good rest and what role it plays in recovery building and adapting and then also understanding that the more I do isn't necessarily mean the more muscle I'm going to build that no relationship think, between the two of them if you look at the if you looked at a pie chart of uh you know what affects your progress a third of it is your sleep so go ahead and take a third of it away. That's how good you're going to do. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And I don't mean just not getting sleep. I mean just getting crappy sleep, not being consistent. I had this kid work for me <clears> once, <throat> uh, and I think he was in his, I know he was in his early 20s, maybe 22, 23. And I had another young lady, I've talked about her before, who worked in my facility who was just way ahead of the curve when it came to functional medicine stuff. She was a physical therapist, but she also uh, was very well versed in this kind of stuff. And we would have these conversations in my studio. I used to love it. It was a small studio. And we'd have these great discussions and conversations. And she kept hammering sleep, kept hammering sleep, right? And this kid's like, I don't care, you know? And he was already kind of muscular. He's like, whatever. And she said, I'll, I'll, let's, let's do a challenge. 30 days. She said, 30 days, 
go to bed and wake up at the same time. She goes, mm -hmm. and I bet you'll hit PRs and all your lifts. So he says, I'll take that bet. He gained eight pounds of muscle naturally <laughs> in a 30 day period Crazy. just from doing that. Yeah. Eight pounds of lean body mass. Now, the last point was supplements, right? Um, I went through two phases, two revelating, uh, you know, like awakenings, I should say, uh, when it came to my understanding of fitness. One was the role of supplements, and one was the role of steroids, and they're both closely related. So when I was a kid and I first started working out, I, I didn't think uh, bodybuilders took steroids. I thought Arnold was natural. In fact, when I found out he took steroids, I was devastated. So I, I thought I thought the key was like supplements, right? Remember, you, I was a kid. Can you just see? I could just no. I, I can like picture him because of how yeah. much reading and following of all his how stuff, many vitamins, like, you're finding just that out. That, out. that has to go up there in like top five devastating days for oh, you. Yeah. I, oh yeah, I'm sure. Like you, I was because probably I, list some family members passing away a little bit higher, yeah. and then it's like Arnold no, on steroids. I was. <laughs> I remember because like, my sure. my cousin and I we both started working out at 14, and we had Arnold's <laughs> Encyclopedia of Bodybuilding. I read everything, you know, all that stuff back then. The magazines didn't talk about yeah steroids it was big like no everything's natural so i thought it was supplements that's what i thought and i took all the supplements and i did everything <clears throat> nothing worked i finally invested my hard-earned money i think i was 15 maybe i had i was working at the time and I would, I would get paid and and i saved up my money and i bought a stack that cost me i want to say 170 dollars back in 1993 or something like that right so this was like a million dollars back then to a teenage kid i had saved up all this money and I remember I didn't have a bank account, so I told my mom, can you get a money order for me? I had to convince her. <laughs> you had to get a money order to buy supplements? Because I had to buy it oh, <laughs> wow. through the mail. I had to buy it through the mail. Dedicated. That's a great story And I right told, there. I remember I had to convince my mom because she's like, you're not going to spend your money on this garbage. I'm like, mom, that's my money, whatever. So she finally did you it. You used J.G. Wentworth? I, <laughs> no, I didn't call him. Okay. So I send it in, and in the mail comes this kit. And it's like seven bottles. And, 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 and I mean, the, the company used to have these before and afters that would just blow your mind. And I'm like, oh, this is the, this is it. This is totally going to work. And I gained nothing, not even a little bit. I got nothing from the whole thing. And I remember I was so jaded, right? Fast forward, I thought, oh, it's got to be anabolic steroids. Then I managed gyms. So I'm a young general manager. And I think the difference between me and a, and a, and a bodybuilder or me and the most jack in the gym is steroids. It has to be steroids. That's what it is. And I had trainers who worked for me. And I remember discovering some of these trainers took anabolic steroids. And I was shocked to realize that it, that they took steroids because they didn't look like they did. Mm. I remember I looked at them like, wait, you're on steroids? You don't <laughs> look like- It's not you. working. <laughs> that's that's yeah. wild. Yeah. And then I would see pictures of of bodybuilders before they took steroids, uh, like uh, Ronnie Coleman, who got, you know, he was 10th place Mr. Olympia naturally. And then getting in this podcast, interviewing <clears throat> some of these, these crazy athletes and realizing, oh, there's a whole nother level of genetics that comes into play. Yeah. Um, and so that's, that was, that's, it's connected to the supplements. Now, of course, anabolic steroids definitely play a role. Supplements play a tiny role, a very, very tiny role. So realizing that in your twenties, you'll save money, time and investment. And you can invest it in other things like education, yeah. coaching, programming. This is all that make so a big difference. relevant. This is our conversations I'm having right now with my boys, even my young one too, <laughs> but uh, they're very interested right now in like, getting attention and getting jacked and, and like, I'm like, really? Like, that's a thing again. I'm like excited about it. Uh, but I mean, they've been interested in just like improving their overall skill for their different various sports and whatnot. But Ethan's really on this quest right now to like, you know, get, get more muscular, get jacked. And so he's we, already pretty jacked for a young kid. I, that's what I no, tell them. They both have great genetics. He's, he's pretty fit. muscular. They also work out a lot, dude. Yeah. You know, gymnastics and everything. I mean, it's, yeah. it's a lot. And it's like, and that's kind of the thing is like making sure we recover. And, um, is but, he the buff kid in the school? He's, he's, uh, He's kind of like right there with the jocks, you know, like they're, they're kind of like, he's on par with, you know, some of the other kids. Some of the other kids are actually lifting weights and he's not really lifting weights yet. He's doing more calisthenic and, you know, explosive moves and stuff, Good for him, dude. but like he's, he's got a lot of potential, you know, ahead of him. Uh, but like, we've been trying so hard to implement morning breakfast of like heavy protein and mm. trying all the different angles, like sausage, egg, scrambles, uh, bacon, you know, whatever we can do to kind of get it from whole sources. And then, you know, they'll, they'll eat. And then it's just like, it's like, dad, I just can't, I, I'm not hungry. I like, I've tried, I'm trying to stimulate it. And so, you know, I'm trying all these different combos. And so what I will do is we'll do like a scramble of eggs or like a bacon. And then I'll also combo it with a shake on top of it. Well, just, just sure. to kind of, you know, re reinforce that. Cause during the day he's better about like getting his protein targets. And I'm like trying to 
Because we, I mean, oh my God, we're so vocal. You know, what are you that. using? What are they? Or what? I mean, I'm sure they can tolerate whey right now. So they are they doing whey? Yeah, they they do well with whey, thankfully. So Legion, yes, yeah, so I do Legion, Good. and not I'll make it for them. I'll, I'll make a big batch for for all three of us. So we've been pretty consistent about that. So you the just last blend it up month. in the morning. They drink it. Uh huh. Plain, or are you, are you doing fruit flavors? flavors? What are you doing? What are you like? It's I know really they just like it's either chocolate or vanilla. They're nothing like special. Oh wow, and crazy. Really? Yeah, because well, they're eating breakfast with it. Yeah, yeah, I know. But Legion has so many different like great like oh, crazy flavors. Have, and some of that as a kid, I would <laughs> like be like cinnamon toast crunch. Yeah, they got all stuff, kinds. Yeah. Of, like Legion has a. I don't know how many my cast. I, 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 like, I don't know. It's too much know, flavor. I know you're not a way guy, obviously, but. I, I can't remember. I just recently I ordered some stuff uh, from Legion. I think so. I'm on this like Ninja Cream kick. It's it's basically just a protein shake, but it blends up like so ice cream. You're, you're, so it's got the machine blends it in a it's way. It's wild. Has anybody else done I it yet? I'm trying no. to get. You've talked about it, and it's like sometimes I want to fight you guys. Dude. Like, <laughs> Why? I give you guys the best. So we, I give you the best show <laughs> recommendations. Go. I give you the best food recommendations. Like I give you so much gold, mm. and you guys just sit on it. Mm. Sit on it. Mm. <laughs> you squander it. Squander. Wait, Thank what'd you, you. What'd you say? Squander it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> hey, sorry to interrupt. Look, I have a free guide that teaches you how to lose fat in three steps. Just three steps that will burn the most amount of body fat and help keep it off. This guide is totally free. We're giving it to everybody right now. If you want it, click on the link at the top of the description below. All right. Back to the show. So yes, yeah, listen, Adam. so the the ninja the ninja cream is basically just whatever uh, milk or almond milk or whatever you want to mix just with whips the protein. It up. Yes, and it's the and then you freeze it overnight and then you put it in the ninja cream and it and the way it whips it it whips it into and you can change it to be more yogurt like more like icy like or more like ice cream like creamy hmm. and it whips. So what are you doing? Whey protein in there? Yeah. So I so I and I I think Legion uh does it has the one of the best like combinations of like with like food or ice creams or things like that. Yeah. So it's and just vanilla is what I do. Are you looking at all his look at how many flavors he has? Yeah, I, I know. It's got like twelve flavors. Hold on, hold yeah. on. Scroll, Dude, he only needs three though, second. I'll be honest. Like, yeah. Okay, so chocolate, vanilla, coconut cream, yeah. peanut butter, fudge. Oh look at little, it's like little chocolate or chocolate just, peanut butter for you me. You see that little the little chat pop up? What was yeah, tried? Cinnamon cereal, chocolate peanut butter, yeah, salted cereal. caramel, birthday cake, chocolate. I've tried all of Cookies and, and cream, birthday cake, yeah, banana bread, strawberry banana, cocoa yeah. cereal, unflavored. So the basic ones. Hey, are there's best. more. How there's hardcore more. do you have to be to get unflavored? Well, unflavored. <laughs> yeah. So I have. So yeah. unflavored is actually really cool uh, with food. Like oh, so, sure. if you mix with food, you don't want to change the like your pancakes, your pancakes, or things like that. Oh, you just right, want to boost right. the protein. So it's really good for things like that. But vanilla, I think, does a pretty good job. You know, to, to 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 your son's defense or to any kid's defense about not eating in the morning. You know, they've done studies on this with kids, and they just don't operate well in the morning. Oh. And there's been uh, lots yeah. of arguments where uh, you know experts are coming out saying we need to change the time school starts. It's too early. Uh, I agree. And they're not biologically. It, it just it's you're setting them up for at a disadvantage for mm -hmm. getting up so early. But the reason why, in fact, I was talking to my uh, homeschool uh, kids do that and have shown you know great you, like results. I was talking to my wife about this because her niece and nephew start school so damn early. They mm -hmm. live in Las Vegas, and I said, you know why they do that? It's it's to cater to the parents who who work. Yeah, because you drop them off at school and then go to work. Well, yeah, yeah or it's, it's or you could schedule. make the argument they're you're training the kids for a nine to five type of you know. Type but it's of not station. nine. I think they start school at like seven or at six something. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's like crazy early. Seven? Something's ridiculous. Yeah, some kids do that. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Oh, I've never heard it before. Eight. Yeah, eight's kind of the earliest eight, I've ever heard. Really seven? That's yeah. weird. Yeah, 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 you're yeah, sure yeah. they're not just getting up and the parents are taking them at no, seven? No, 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 no. I'm almost wow. positive. That's wow. crazy. Yeah, but, that's earlier than I've ever heard. Eight, eight is typically eight, eight, fifteen is as far as I know been the kind of standard like school time. But yeah. There's, Starting. I've saw I've seen some data and they're saying something like school schools should start around ten or eleven, um, just in terms of their isn't brain it weird? I would have done way better on that schedule. Isn't it weird? A like a, like you think about a lot of things that like we've really like evolved and changed yeah. and improved like everything it, like technology, science, name it. Right? We've we've you know when you look back 50, 60 years, how different it is today yeah. than just fifty. Like education is like one of the things that we have just like it's this. Old way of doing things. Do you know why? Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It's 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 because uh, it's not a as competitive a market as it should be. No. If it was a a full on market based uh, application, first off, by now you wouldn't be spending three hundred dollars on a textbook in a college class. That makes no sense when you can download a, a file for almost nothing. You would have the classes if you had to pay for it and it was market based. Now I'm not saying there's a there there, there wouldn't be value in having some. Uh, free education for people who can't afford it. But if it was mostly market-based, 
then people would look at education and look at the market value. That's right. They, and what you mean by that yeah. is it would create a competitive environment for the, just like companies, right? Totally. Imagine if, 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 I mean, this is a school is such an example of like, yeah, uh, uh, like what would look like or a microcosm of what it would look like if we ran a socialist society where it's like the government decides like this is the company or this is the way things are. And that's exactly what you get. You would get like old dinosaur ways of doing things versus allowing the free market to go out there, compete with each other and let the results show. You know, oh, we let our kids sleep until 11. Okay, great. How are their test scores? Yeah. How, you know, how are they doing? Yep. Like, okay, they're only doing this good. Or we do this with our kids. We break every this. Uh, oh, wow. Well, how are they Instead doing? Of, this is the way we always do it. Yeah, it's just crazy. Or you would it's, look at it, you would look crazy. at like higher education is like this because we still pay for that, right? But you would even look at it and go, okay, you want to get a degree in uh, art history. Uh, I'm not spending $40,000 a year on that because that degree is not worth anything on the market. So let's get you to learn that for free over here. Uh, oh, you want to learn, you know, computer engineering or something with there's market value. That makes more sense. But that doesn't happen, right? We just push it and everybody needs to do it. And oh. uh, so, that yeah, it needs to be a little bit more market-based. But anyway, to his to his defense, uh, kids, they're, they're just from their brain development, from what I've read, mornings suck even yeah. more for them. You know, you know back to our original point of how we started this, a lot of the the topic has been kind of on my mind a lot because of the docu-series and everything and, and shooting and having this conversation with the audience and stuff. And I was thinking the other day, and I and do you do you think we did we've done a real disservice by oversimplifying the the process of building muscle and losing body fat? Do you think we've do you think that we've done that? Do you think we've oversimplified or do you think we've overcomplicated? Like how would you communicate us personally? Yeah, no, 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 not us, but like the like, fitness industry. Yeah, the industry. oh, it's overcomplicated. Yeah, yeah, it's way it's convoluted. Yeah, it's too much. Way overcomplicated. I, you, and, and the and it's not just overcomplicated. The the focus has been put on things that are not important. So we've taken the priorities and we've mixed them and switched so them. So I think yeah. that's a better way of saying it because my initial knee-jerk reaction is the same thing yeah. too. Overcomplicated. There's... We, we, we've overcomplicated. There's some simple principles that if you follow, people would see way more results. But then there's the other side and I, I was talking about this in one of the episodes that... And it reminds me, this is... I actually love this part and, and the art of it. There is this really... Uh, incredible dance that you're doing when it comes to uh, apply because it's a stress you're applying on mm -hmm, the body mm -hmm. and so knowing how to apply the appropriate stress to reap the maximum benefits paired with the right amount of you know food and calories and nutrients to support it but to not overdo it and not to underdo it there's a bit of a dance there there is that's why you need simplicity is your structure yeah a hundred percent because there's a lot of nuance to, to what you're talking about mm -hmm. uh with adjusting and finding the right dosage of all these things look if 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 people truly understood what made the biggest difference what moved the needle what you would see would be a much greater market for workout instruction on, and help on exercise technique and form. You would see far more investment in that direction from consumers than you would into all the other weird crap that does almost nothing. Um, and then as a result, you would see better coaches and trainers. Although now there's a, a lot of great ones out there, but you would see even better ones. But instead what people do is they'll take $500 and they'll invest it in things that don't really move the needle uh, versus hiring a trainer for five sessions. You think, what, what can five sessions do for me? Way more than almost anything else you can spend $500 on when it comes to your health and fitness. Mm -hmm. Five hours with a trainer. If it's $100 an hour, which a lot of places it's less than that. But five hours with a good trainer, a really good coach or trainer, there's almost nothing else you can spend $500 it's on. Like constant dependency or self-sufficiency. Yes. You know, like it's one or the other. Like, do you want to learn how to do this and actually be able to replicate that and continue it? Or do you want to learn it once like barely, you know, and just have somebody keep like reinforcing that for you. One of the greatest uh, misinformations or disinformations in fitness and health is that uh, exercise is just about moving and it really doesn't matter what you do. And it's really just about sweating, right? It's really just about moving and sweating. Um, and that's it. And, and so what's happened is people do not view movement in any way, shape or form like a skill. They just don't. So if I were to go and say, you know, hey, I want to go learn jujitsu. It would be, everybody would totally understand that I would go to a school and I would learn from an instructor and I would learn the techniques because I'm learning jujitsu. Totally. When you're going to go strength train or you're going to run or you're going to cycle or you're going to do any form of exercise, those are all skills. The greater, the, the better your ability to do the skill, 
the more you're going to get back from it in terms of your fitness and the, the lower your, of course, your risk of injury is. But nobody looks at it that way. Everybody thinks, you know, I want to go for a run because I want to go get tired. That's what I need to go do. And so there's no, there's no consideration. And so they get hurt and they get, bare, they get crappy results. Or they go strength train and they think to themselves, I'm going to go work my legs. I'm going to go work my chest. I'm going to go work my back. They don't realize that those exercises that do those things are skills. And if I can perfect those skills, if I just go practice and perfect those skills, I'll get all the results I want and then some so, versus just go get tired. So, I, okay. So what I'm hearing now from all this kind of going around, Rob, is like we have, we've oversimplified the most important things and we've overcomplicated the things that matter the least. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's a bit of a combination of both. Maybe. Totally. No, totally. Yeah. Like what you're saying right now, like I think that's an oh, area that we, we've overoversimplified that. We Oh, just go just in and move. do, you know, just go do any workout or pick it up. It's yeah. like 31 flavors. Yeah. Choose any what you movement. like, it's you know, great. go do it. Right. Just whatever, whatever program you like. Right. That's we've over, we've oversimplified yeah. that. Like, no, it's like, like it's quality of movement. I actually talked about this just the other day. I said, man, mm -hmm. I care more about when I'm getting, and I'm doing this, like the quality of a movement. Like I don't care more, more than how much weight I'm pushing or how many reps I'm doing. As soon as that movement, I start to feel it. So I like, boom, set's done. I'm done right now. Like, because you, let me give you an example for someone listening right now, a 12 year old baseball player who knows how to throw a ball, who's been practicing for the last five years, will throw a baseball further than a bodybuilder that never throws a baseball, okay? The 12 year old is weaker, doesn't have nearly as much muscle or strength, but they're gonna throw the baseball further and with more accuracy because of the skill and the technique. Apply that to exercise. If, like what you're saying, Adam, you go and you perfect the skill of squatting, pressing, rowing, uh, you know, uh, lunging, whatever, the value you'll get from it in terms right. of results yeah. explode, they absolutely explode. If you just go to do it, just to go move, you're, it's like 90% of the results are gone. You're not even going to get 10% of the results. And by the way, now you've increased your risk of injury by, you know, probably by 10. This is no wonder. It's no wonder people don't realize that there's value in the skill of the exercise. It's just the means to an end. Just move. That's right. all you got to do. By the way, this is why walking, when you look at the data, why walking beats the crap out of almost any form of exercise. It's not because walking is like this great form of exercise. You'll get better cardio fitness from almost any other form of cardiovascular exercise. People are familiar with that skill. Strength, tra people still, thankfully, you know, you know, hopefully it's going to stay this way, but people still understand the skill of walking because we still practice it. So the average person could go walk yeah. and they're not going to screw up walking because they still practice it. But most people stop running it's when they're the 12. only thing we all share. That's right. <laughs> this is my, in fact, I'll, pu I'll pull up a study just to give everybody an example of how, uh, how effective uh, exercise can be and how important to exercise technique is. They did a study and they found you know, this large study that 30 minutes of five days a week of walking gave people two thirds of all of the health and mortality benefits that you could get from exercise. Two thirds. Wow. From walking. Wow. Say that again. Say it again. So 30 minutes, five days a week. If you took all the average people and they just walked for 30 minutes, five days a week, they would get two thirds of all the potential benefits they could get from exercise. Now, I think it's probably less than that because I don't know how they're figuring that, but still, you get a lot of benefit from it. Now, is it because walking is this special form of exercise? Uh, not really. It's mainly special because the average person can still walk with good technique. Now, if they applied that to strength training and they mastered the techniques of the exercises, this is, by the way, what a trainer largely does, aside from coaching and teaches you, you know, coaches you the process. But largely what a good coach does is it, it's like a jujitsu instructor teaching you how to do the perfect triangle choke. They know the technique. They understand the, the nuances. They know how to make your technique effective. And then boom, you get great results yeah. while you do it the whole time. So you know, How come you don't watch UFC fights? Why don't I watch them anymore? Yeah, you want to know the true story? Huh? You want to hear the true story why? Yeah. I used to love MMA. I loved I competed in jujitsu. Was a judo, you know, did judo as a kid. Love the fight sports. And then I started training a lot of doctors and then they would inform me on concussions and what happens to the brain, what happens to people, what happens to these fighters. And it killed it for me. Really? I can't watch too many striking, uh, arts anymore because I see the, them trading blows and I'm just like, Oh fuck, they're, 
They're ruining their brains. <laughs> wow. It screwed it up for me. Interesting. Mm. Even because uh, because MMA is significantly better than boxing. Oh, yeah. Boxing is really bad. Really bad. Right? Yeah. Oh, that's really... You know, I, I, so when I see a knockout, it kind of hurts I've never heart. asked you that. And I'm like, this guy, you know so much more about ju judo and jiu-jitsu than I do, yet I, I don't rarely ever miss a UFC fight, and you never watch any of them. And I thought, that's so interesting. There was one doctor in particular I trained, and he would just... I, I would have the fights on sometimes. <laughs> like, make like, you feel guilty or something? And he'd be like, oh, man, you know what's happening right now? And he'd like break it down to me. And I and then I now now every time I see it, it's like I like I see the dude like five years off his life or like Ugh. he just forgot a bunch of stuff by getting knocked out, you know? Oh. So it ruined it for oh, me. Oh, interesting. Some of the suck? retired fighters that come back and they they do those announcing gigs and it's like rough, dude. Bro. Oh, or what's I really so sad. what's yeah, really sad. bad, what we've seen in the last like four or five years is a lot of these guys that are been retired for a long time coming back because they need money yeah. Oh, yeah. and it's taking fights worse. on. I mean, look at what we're seeing with Tyson right now. Like, what are you doing, dude? I was such a big fan of Chuck Liddell back in the day. Oh, Loved God. him. I know. Look, Have you really heard him talk? Best yeah. of all time. Bro. I know. Podcasts it's and stuff. Rough, bro. It breaks my heart. It's one you know? of the examples. I'm like, oh, yeah. Man. You know, it's these, these warriors that went out and just, just, oh man, it's terrible. I mean, I, it's almost easier to see someone have a physical like injury to their leg or something than the brain. Do you think we're going to see? Because it, it's still so. I mean, well, we're coming up on about 20 years now, but we're going to need a good solid probably 60 to 80 to, of like consistent research and data to really start to see the effect on uh, longevity in people's lives. Uh, from and I mean, we I would say right now, uh, the explosion of because boxing's been around forever and tr a huge yeah. tradition and, and, and so much fun. Fighting but sports it, have been some of those are but, some of the first sports in the Olympics, right? But I would think I would say, and I don't know if this is true, you can fact check me, but I feel like uh, MMA and UFC has brought it to the average person, yeah. like, like so many people yeah. are aspiring to be a mixed martial artist, and I feel like so many more people, and I think you can measure that just simply by the amount of you know, jujitsu places that you can go and all these different MMA places. You have the fact UFC gyms that have exploded. So we don't have a lot of research and data around like how that really affects a lot of people long, long term. You know, I think, would you, wouldn't you say that? We have a lot of data on boxing. On boxing. Yeah, but not MMA. It's, um, I mean, it's not going to be good, but these are adults. They're engaging in something voluntary. So do I think we should ban it? No. Uh, but I think consumers' tastes are starting to change maybe a little bit um, mm. as people become more aware. Maybe. I don't know. It's it's less brutal than it Jury's used to be. Jury's out for that. I well, think, think about boxing. Boxing used to be 20 rounds and they brought down 15. They, oh, got, 20. Yeah. they got the you know the gloves bigger. I because think if, yeah, I think they, if anytime they they – like regulate some kind of rule or something to make it more more action focused and like yeah. more impactful and less volume. I think that's sort of the move. Like, and it's just frustrating when I see like you know they try to, um, you know, tone down a lot of the the violence and stuff. Like for instance, for football or for anything else, and then it's like there's going to be uh, that's going to end up somewhere else because there's definitely demand for that, yeah. you know? And it's, it's something that I just don't feel like that's, it's part of our human nature to like express it and, and be out with it. And some people are like way more drawn to that. It's almost like a, uh, an impulse and urge look, that like some men have that they just look, have to express I know, it. I know people personally that boxing saved their life. Yeah, because they were yeah. they were delinquents. They Dude, were. I have a cousin. I tell you firsthand, like coaching some of these kids, yeah. like that are just degenerate, like fuck ups. Like they're not going to go anywhere in life, and then they come in, and this is like the answer for yes. all of their problems. It's like they have like an outlet. They have, people like they get rewarded for their their gameplay. They 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 go all in. All of a sudden, now this translates to better behaviors. Yep. You know, in the school, and then you know with the relationships, and it's just like. To to cut that out is uh, is is a huge disservice. There's a devil's advocate side to that. Though, what is too. it? I mean, you could make the case of the argument too that that's uh, these, the boxing, the fighting, the football uh, space, right, is exploiting those kids. No, because no, they're they are they are willing to do these things. They're looking for those outlets. You know and what? So well, we could throw them in a ring. We could throw them in this. You know, like the that. I'm not saying that I agree. I'm I, just saying that there's the, there's an argument. On I hear the other side look of that the too. physicality, um, the combat of boxing of football yeah, will attract that. the kind the exact kind of kid that needs structure, coaching, and challenge. So you're some. You're some kid on the street. You got no dad. You got a bad future. 
and you like getting in fights and getting in trouble, and then some coach or someone says, "You think you're tough? Get in the ring, come train yeah. with us." Well, there's plenty, and then of, you go in there and you fight, and you yeah. actually fight. I mean, there's plenty of research. There's, there's, there's yeah, plenty of research of to, like to, to prove that point through just through sports. Yeah, period. yeah. I mean, they, yeah. like the the uh, the amount of kids that are more successful in school and life and everything that from from organized sports yeah. is, is is much higher than if they don't. Right. Yeah, so. dude. And you also got to you know, there's there's also an honor to it. You know, uh, fighting in the ring. I mean, I, I would never street. personally. I would never want it to go away. No, I mean, no, I, I think that, I think the, I think I the think benefits outweigh the the negatives. My, that's the point I'm making. Uh, absolutely, that's fair. Yeah, and yeah. and at the end of the day, it's a choice. Yes, yeah. You, you you choose to do it, right? And 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 you're right. Uh, would that kid be better off on the street? Yeah, risking being in a gang risking or, life and gangs and yeah. doing illegal stuff. No, I'd, I'd much rather see him put it in a productive thing in a sport where maybe one day he actually gets paid legitimately and or he learns teamwork, he earns overcoming you know adversity, he learns all kinds of... So, yeah. no, I, I agree. I'm just saying that I know that there's a there's another argument to the other side that like people will try and make for that. But I, mean, I think if we make the... like It would be different if you know certain sports were mandatory as you went through an agent. You had to go through it. It's like, yeah. I think there should be a choice. And, and as long as there's a choice. Justin, yeah, brought, up a the choice. Justin brought up the military because you see young men get into that for something. But, you know, like what kind of... Are they exploiting these young men who are looking for that kind of whatever, who need help or whatever? I mean, look, we need them. I don't see you volunteering yeah. to go put your and life I mean, on the line. I, like I mean, we need we're people like that. them by not giving them structure and discipline. Like I don't know. Like, it is interesting though how that. So it's funny you brought that up. So literally day before yesterday, one of my little cousins, who's he's not so little, he's like hella tall. He's taller than me, but he's twenty three ish. And anybody under the age of thirty is a kid. Huh? I know. It's like, <laughs> yeah, he's a kid. Know. He's definitely a kid. Uh he j he just signed up for me, and he. Uh, he makes my childhood look like a cakewalk. Oh, he's got, he's oh, got a rough one? Yeah. Like I said, mine was a cakewalk. Wow. So, uh, and, you know, he's made a choice to go to into the military. And there is something that's there, you know, I, I do feel like, uh, and I remember there was a point in my life where the, uh, this was on the table for me. And I think it's interesting how uh, chilled kids, even big kids that are 20s, there's something that we, we crave uh, discipline and structure. Mm-hmm. And purpose. And, and yeah, and it's like, well, definitely that, right? We definitely yeah. have that. But I think the one that's less obvious is the discipline and structure, right? It's like you you don't realize that that, that the kids want that, that the kid yeah. wants discipline and structure. Sometimes that's why they're pressing the line so hard. It's a hundred percent. Where, where is I, I've it? Got a, I've you got know, another I got another it. friend right now and he's going through this with his his little his little one. And uh man, they're having a they're having a really hard time with him at school right now. He's only six years old and he's getting he's getting in trouble every single day. They they score the kids every day and, and like if you get under a certain number, it's like they're doing they're doing bad things. And then he gets home and he gets spankings and he gets in trouble like every single day. Mm -hmm. And I was, Katrina and I were talking about, I mean, and the reason why we talk about it all the time is like we're always trying to look for this in our own our own habits, our own lives, our own raising and stuff like that. And it's like, man, uh, I think that's another thing that parents sometimes don't realize is that the kid is getting exactly what he wants. The, the the spanking is what he wants. He wants that structure, discipline, and attention. And even though it's negative attention, it's attention. Yeah. And so what that would do to me if I was going through that situation is I would be really reflecting on, okay, how am I not giving my son the attention that he needs, that he feels the need he needs to, to seek out negative attention at school. In, in like, what does he need? What is he not getting? Yes. What is yeah. he not getting yes. that, that, that this is filling that need is subconsciously because he doesn't even know that it's, he's doing it for that reason. It's, right? em, it's emotional yeah. dysregulation. This happens to adults too, but definitely with kids, when kids have a feeling that they can't handle, that's when they quote unquote act out and you can't beat it out of a kid or punish it out of a kid. You can get them to, become avoidant, ignore it and try to stifle it. But they need to learn how to like, Oh, I got these big ass feeling. I I, I want to climb out of my chair. I want to throw something. Well, we got to, right, how do we, let's see how we can get that kid to learn how to regulate. One of the best ways to do it is co-regulate. But when they, when you put fear in them, when you get them to like, you're bad and shame, it's only going to make it worse. It mm -hmm. only makes it worse. Uh, and, and you're right. Giving them direction and figuring out like what, so my son my my three year old, uh, if he's not getting the connection that he needs, that's when he acts out. And so he used to, and it was tough for me. I I, I was brought up very authoritative style, right? So you mess up, you get in trouble. But uh, and thankfully, my wife is huge on learning about child psychology. She's also very good at reading kids. So now when he acts out, it's like, oh, he needs he needs connection. And I go and I connect with him. You know what happens? He stops. Yeah, yeah. He stops the rest of the day 
doesn't come back. Yeah. You know, it's amazing yeah. uh, what a difference it makes. Oh, it makes a, it, mm-hmm. ma- it makes a, you know, uh, what stemmed this whole conversation about my buddy's kid was I was, I was actually explaining to Katrina, like, I was like, I said, do you understand how special your son is? Like how amazing of a child this kid is? Like he's five years old. I said, have you ever even had a day where you were mad at him? <laughs> five years. Like, have you ever, like, no. Have you ever seen, no. Never had tantrum ever, like nothing. He literally had just had this situation. I hope he doesn't like change when he's a teenager. Uh, you hear those stories? I mean, people say that. <laughs> I think people say that, but I also think you that's- You think they say that because they're like, they're jealous? That's their experience. Well, you just wait. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, my mother-in-law says it really well, really well. Like, you know, son, don't ever let them tell you, uh, let them, don't ever let them influence your experience, yeah, 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 right? Because yeah. that was their experience. You do like, have a very sweet boy. It's, it's, kid, it's, yeah. it's abnormally crazy. And I, I'm the oldest of five, so I- I just want to hug the kid every time I see I helped him. raise. He, uh, I helped raise all my little siblings, and I had a lot of cousins. I was around a lot. like, But no, nothing's like living with kids under your age, right? And you know this, being yeah, the yeah. oldest too. Like, And I tell Katrina, I was like, you- that, have, That's not a normal five-year-old. No, and Katrina's, oh. like, Katrina's the baby in her family. So she doesn't know? Yeah, so she knows what it's like to be an aunt. And an aunt. she's yeah. like, you know, and niece, nieces and nephews. I'm like, no, honey, he's on a, on, a, on another level. And we what we had just had happen, and, and you've all, you, I know as dads, you guys have experienced this. When your child uh, cries in a way of like, it's like a fear cry that you've never heard before, like a different pitch yeah, and yeah, sound. Yeah, 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 yeah. And like- so something had happened to him. He was, uh, we're getting ready for bed and he had just finished brushing his teeth and he had got like toothpaste in his hand or something and he rubbed his eye oh, and, burn. And, and the toothpaste yeah. and it started to burn, right? And so he, he had this cry that was like, he was really scared and you could tell. And it, and even then it wasn't even like really that loud, but it was a different, enough of a cry that, that it, caught, you know my, that it is, caught my attention. Yeah. I was kind of in the other room and I, I come running over. I'm like, what's going on with him? And she's got him up on the counter. He's like, ah, he got something in his eye. And so I'm getting like a warm rag for it. And every time he goes to open it, that cry comes out again because you could tell he's in a lot of yeah. pain. And what had happened, I've never seen this happen before. He has long eyelashes like me. His top eyelashes got hooked into his eye eyeball and under his bottom eyelid. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I, and yeah. and so every time he tried to open it, the it would it would pull and it would it was it, oh. it was like poking him in the eye on top of what he got in it. Mm. And so the so there was like a good solid. Would you do the warm compress? Yeah. Thing? So I'm warm compressing, it, and then eventually Katrina had to just like literally like force his eye open, and then it popped his eye oh. eyelashes out, and it was like. Watching him go through that, right? So we're 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 putting the hot compress on, and then every time we let it go, and he'd try to open it up, that that cry would come out again, and I'd calm him down. Son, it's okay. You're gonna be okay. Daddy's, we're okay. You got you, and you could you could see him self regulating in that moment, like keeping even a situation like that under control. The minute we relieved it, like he was instantly fine, yeah. and like on you his way. You guys are both calm, and it, well, yeah, and that's yeah. I know that's a big. I've p- seen you before. Part. Yeah, your kid will throw like you, if you spill something, you don't act like you don't freak out. Never, like never, because that's what they learn their I, I, dr becky I, I brought her up before she talks about this all the time she gives a great example of the the pilot flying the plane mm-hmm. and the plane starts to shake and the pilot gets on and he's super chill oh you know get a little bit and everybody's like oh cool i'm reading off the pilot because if he freaks out i'm freaking out yeah oh, so geez. when your kid sees dad like i spilled this thing and dad's like oh it's no big deal it's like oh okay i guess we're okay you you know when we learn that like or like learn that we did that i should say uh yeah everybody knows when you have a toddler they they've fucking throw up all the time right yeah, so yeah, yeah. when we we were so consistent <laughs> with with time. like yeah. puking that we never overreacted that like it is the it's like almost comical to watch him go through like having the flu or getting sick or getting car sick because he's had all the above and he will be like just chilling and he'll be like uh daddy i'm gonna throw up and you're like oh okay, oh, okay. buddy he's and he's like there's nothing for me to throw up in. and it's Brush like hold on hold on let me get you know you're like scrambling in the car real quick <laughs> and he had to him and he's like you his brains out and then he'd be wipe his face and then just head he's back okay. yeah just no crying no nothing because we've like always been so calm about that and i crack up i tell katrina i'm like oh my god i get like like i'll cry when i throw up really bad like this kid just just puke and just go right about it because That's awesome. but it was because so early on i remember being so consistent with that and to see it play out as he's gotten older but yeah, that's how this all started was I was telling Katrina, I was like, no, I said, honey, I said, he's he's definitely, and, and I, I obviously as parents, you want to feel like, okay, we did a good job and so like that, but I'm like, he's my, on another level. I got a text from my wife yesterday because she was driving and my son, you know, he doesn't wear diapers anymore. So he's, you know, he tells her when he has to go pee, but sometimes he waits until now, right? Yeah, He'll hold minute. it, hold it, hold it. And so what we don't do, a lot of parents do this, like you, you have to go pee before we leave, you have to go pee and they force them. And Jessica's like, I'd rather him have a few accidents um, than him uh, than us him thinking we don't believe him when he tells us something. So right. in other words, if we say, do you have to pee? And he says, no. 
we let him know that we believe him. Even though he might be telling us something that's not necessarily true, yeah. we want him to know that mom and dad will believe you. And so she's really good at that. So anyway, they go in the car. Sure enough, they're driving and he's like, Mom, I have to pee. There's zero seconds left. It's coming. <laughs> zero <laughs> seconds. Ah! <laughs> she gets them all set up, you know? Luckily, yeah. they were able to get him out. Uh, and then he, when he pees, he goes, oh, my God, I just peed 100. And she's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I guess he's giving it a level, uh, you know? It's so good. She, she put up decorations uh, for Halloween, by the way, yesterday. And uh, my daughter comes downstairs. There's a couple dolls that we have. And they're not scary, but they're Halloween, you know? And my my she's almost two. My daughter, she comes down. And I hear her going, scary. Scary, Papa. Scary. And I'm like, scary. I look over and she walks over to me. Scary. And she points out, oh, I'm sorry, honey. I got to move the dolls for her. So <laughs> hey, sorry to interrupt. We have a free guide titled Understanding Your Mood, Stress, and Sleep. It tackles all of those things from a health and longevity perspective. It's a totally, totally free guide. So just click on the link at the top of the description below. Hmm. She's so cute. Max is going through this uh, naked phase right now, which I, I love. I'm all for is it. Is he like you? Or he just yeah, shirt? yeah. He just like, yeah. <laughs> He comes out now. Like Porky Pig. Yeah, yeah. He'll, come out, he'll come out in the morning. You know what I'm saying? He'll come in the morning sometimes now. Mm -hmm. And he, he climbs in the bed a lot of times early in the morning, like around five or whatever like that, right. right? And we'll just let him kind of climb in and like sleep for another hour or two with us. And then we get up. <laughs> like he comes around the corner and he's got like no bottoms on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just a shirt. Yeah, yeah. We like, need a poo and, I'm told, yeah. and she's like, oh, where's your underwear? And I'm like, ah, leave him alone. Yeah. Your rod dad wears his like he's that. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Just don't like, sit yeah. on things. Just yeah. leave them yeah. do that. Yeah. 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 Justin, do you, yeah. your boys are older. Do you still, you must still wrestle with them. Oh, yeah. Every day. Oh, yeah? yeah like every hard? Day. Yeah, and it's because your boy now, your older boy's. It's like, actually you like, can't like fuck around anymore. Like no, I have careful. to. I have to be real tactful with it too, because it's like they they're they're at a level now where they could like go a little too hard and like them. I, I, I could actually hurt. That's what I'm saying. You got to be careful. They could hurt me. Yeah, because they're strong. Yeah, and, and they don't realize that because. You know, Everett especially because he's just still younger and um, he's just used to always just jumping on me. I'm fine. I'll just like throw him and, you know, no big deal. But now he'll jump on me and I'm not looking. I'm like, oh, like, yeah. I almost hurt my back like really bad the other day. And I'm like, but you can't do that when I'm not looking. Like, yeah. it's just not like you're too heavy now. Do they like, gang it, up on you? Is it you versus both of them? Uh, th that happened the other day where it, it, it was more like, Ethan stole something from me. I think it was like the remote. And then I'm chasing him over. I'm trying to jump over like the couch. And like, you know, I was in that like weird pickle thing where it's like, yeah. he's around the corner and then I'm around this corner and we're kind of doing this. And then uh, I finally get him. And then Everett comes from the back, jumps on my back. He's trying to choke me out because he's learned jujitsu. And so he's oh, like no. trying to do all his like jujitsu moves no. on me. And I'm just like, no. <laughs> and then I got one hand in this hand. I could still like manhandle him pretty good, you know, and like pin him and like put him down to the ground. Uh, but not much longer. I feel already I'm losing, I'm losing a little bit of that. And that's why I'm hitting the gym. <laughs> that's that's the, the, that's yeah. the He's like, it has nothing to do with Adam. It has everything to do yeah, with Adam. Yeah, I, have nothing to, I don't care what ha is going on anywhere else. I'm like, I got to get stronger. My dad, my dad used to wrestle, my me, my cousin and I, because we're both the same age. And so right when we were like 11 or 12, he'd wrestle both of us. And he would do this thing that was just, now I'm like, I wish <coughs> I had two boys that I could do this with because it's so funny. He would hold us both down. He'd laugh like, "Oh, look, I got both you guys." It's the whatever, and then he'd say, "You guys should hug each other," and he'd make us, <laughs> yeah, he'd squish that, us yeah. together and make yeah. us hug. And we're like, "No!" Nah! And he'd laugh. I used to take their hands and punch them each with other? our own yeah, hands. No, yeah. like, why, are you, why are you guys hitting each other? That's yeah, the greatest. Yeah, it's fun. That's so fun. I remember the first time I figured that out. Where were we? I think we were up in Tahoe together, and uh, we were with the whole all the families in Everett. I, I was messing with him. I don't remember what I said or what I did to him, but we were like in line for something, and I started I started fucking around with him, and the way he grabbed me. I was Oh shit! Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Oh, you're he practices. You're, yeah, yeah. I'm like, okay, this is like, and, but it's so like right away, I'm like, oh, this yeah. is Justin. Right? My, like, my two year old, no, my two year old, goes hard. Dude. She, yeah. she learned, up. she learned that if she says "ow," I'll stop. So now she says, uh, she's so good. like, yeah, she'll, I'll go tickle and she'll, ow. Oh. And I'm like, okay, I'm done. Uh, Cause I don't want her to think, you know what I mean? I, I yeah. want to listen to what yeah, she's yeah, saying. Yeah, but I'm like, yeah. let me go more. Yeah. yeah. I'm wondering, I'm wondering when the moment's going to come. Cause my dad, it got to a point where he would just like smother me. And then I got strong enough so I could reverse him. And he used to like, in order to get me to stop, he'd like try and kiss me. And I'd be like, oh, God, oh, no. no. And I'm like, that's a great move. I might have to use that. That's you know, a great now move. that like, I'm I'll close you, to that. It's a great dad move. I'll give yeah. you, I'll give you some, some, I'll, I'll, I'll forecast for you. So, Everett, how old's Everett? Yeah, he's 11. Okay. Yeah. So, by the time he's 15, if he keeps doing jujitsu, he will be able to submit you. You think so? Yes. You think 15? so? Yes. 
If he does really, four to, yes, four to five years of jujitsu. Now I'm not saying that he's going to kick, like he's going to manhandle you. Yeah, yeah, yeah but yeah. submit him is a big deal. He will be able. To, yes, he will. <laughs> he, he, are, he will because you don't know what he's doing, and you're yeah, going to get yeah, on top yeah, of yeah, him, yeah. and next thing you know, you're choking. He'll especially if yeah, he gets me by surprise. He's going to choke you. He's not going to arm lock you. Arm you're too there. big and strong yeah. still, even by the time he's 15. You think he could even choke him? Yes. Yes. You see how big and thick his neck God, is? You guys need to go. Listen. His, his arms better grow, listen, bro. Can I tell you something? It's easier to <laughs> hey, it's easier to choke someone with a thick neck than it is someone with a skinny neck. Oh, really? Yeah, carotid arteries right there. I could choke Justin with my thumbs right now if I wanted to push on, <laughs> on his carotid artery. I'm not even joking. But yeah, so you guys need to go do jujitsu and, and see for yourself. You'll see these little dudes and you'll go against them. Well, a little, and they'll get tired going against you. I mean, I'm yeah, little dude, it. like I, just, me, I have to me willingly let like him a have Doug, it. who's got jujitsu school. It, I, but a kid, really? Like a I'm kid? not saying he's gonna kick his dad's asshole. No, time. I'm not saying. What I'm either. saying is but they're gonna can, wrestle. If he can submit a, him, there'll be a couple times. If Justin has a bro. I'm not gonna let him live it down. You get tapped, bro, by your son at 15. No, no. If we're not that far away from that, he would have to be pure surprise because I wouldn't let him in that close. He'll be pure surprise. He's gonna. Like, he will, like his way. He he's like, use, I'll drop an elbow on him before yeah, he, he gets to that. Your, I'm, I'm in those practices watching. Like, yeah. I understand like <laughs> exactly. the moves, like in the setup, and like I watch every jujitsu practitioner. Right, I listen. He's like, okay, he's gonna yeah. take your shirt. He's gonna choke you with your shirt. So what's gonna happen? Yeah, I'll take his shirt and I'll like, <laughs> wrap his face up. Bro, you better shirt. not get beat by, by your kid already. No, <laughs> no. what a proud <laughs> moment. What are you talking about? Be so I'm, proud. That's too yeah, early. Well, I that's know, too early. I gotta delay that. Eighteen twenty, Thank you. Eighteen twenty. As far as I can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially us. Like we're, you know, I'd like to think we're. That's like my one thing. Fit buff dads, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like maybe your average yeah. dad should get his ass beat by fucking 15. Hey, my dad had size and and you know I will, he used it against me. Like I had strength. That was my only I, thing I, I had. I will never forget this young. She was a female instructor. She was a purple belt. She was in a black belt. She was a 130 pound girl. Made a 108 pound man pee his pants because she <laughs> choked him out. Yeah, I believe it. She got him in a choke, and he tried to pick her up. But he started she, in a position, right? N they start on the knees. Exactly. They start on the knees. Yeah. What are you going to? Oh, you're going to go hardcore like that? No, well, I'm like, saying I'm like. <laughs> yeah. He like what is he? I'm yeah, not going to willingly like. Oh yeah. Okay. And then come over here. And then, <laughs> no, 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 no. They no. fucking like. No, they know, were grappling. Oh, I'm going to play by the rules. No, I'm going to play by the rules. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to bite him. Yeah. Hundred percent. Take back what I said. Yeah. You hook him. Sneak tap me. I'm going to punch you in the nuts. Sack tap you, dude. I'm going to twist. I'm all those. Just is gonna grab weapons. By on. all yes. means, hey, by all means, bro, you can't go down hey, already. He's he's bowling tap, ball, yeah, dude. Not until like, till he is a man, man. That's until what he's I'm like, he's gonna tap Dad rules. Yeah, there yeah, are no Courtney. rules. Not until he could drink a beer, bro. Yeah, yeah, until he could, yeah you don't you my, lose till he could drink a beer. He'll stomp his his. <laughs> my God, relax, <laughs> your kid. We're talking about. I'm just kidding. I, it's all hypothetical. Hey, hey, listen. I got to give you. A, I got a hack for you, by the way. I got a hack for you, Justin. Yeah. For your kids, maybe. You know what I've been doing with my kids that is beautiful is I make popsicles out of protein powder. Uh, what? Yeah. what? What? That sounds disgusting. Organi no, it's yeah, not. What kind of protein powder? Okay, so you could get Organifi chocolate. You could mix chocolate popsicles. Chocolate, mix it with uh, almond milk, freeze it, and then we get that cocoa whip. You know that cocoa whip? Yeah, yeah. And I put it in a bowl, and they dip it in there and eat it, and they love it. And so my kids get like ten grams of protein, and it's a treat. Huh. Really? Yes, dude. What was that one? That you can also do I the mean, green I'm, juice. Oh, I'm open. You can also do the green juice popsicles. Hmm. You can also do that. I as mean, well. that sounds like summer refreshing yes. vibe. But chocolate, but I'm chocolate telling you, chocolate popsicles. popsicles. Yes, dude. My kids crush it. I mean, everything tastes good in coconut. I, uh, but I'm like, that's really. I feel like that reminds. Was it like Nesquik? I mean, I'll try it. it. I, I mean, I love. Uh, I love Fudge introducing pops. stuff like, like this to Max. It's so cool, especially to, your son, because yes. he, you, you haven't given him sugar. I know, it's, and it's so cool because blend up we, a protein we, powder. Like we, right it. now, we have uh, protein peanut butter balls at the house. Right yeah. now, right, that's what we're, we have in, in the in the refrigerator, and he just he loves those. Them. Are good, dude. and he's like he 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 is now at a point. I've told you guys this that I don't manage sugar anymore i don't yeah, tell yeah. him no he can have what he yeah. wants pretty but much. now his palate is that's right yeah. he prefers things like protein he would take a protein peanut peanut butter ball okay over I, a chocolate chip cookie i bet or, you he would like a protein i know that's why I'll, I'll try it i'll try it with him so the organifi yeah. is the one we've done we've done it with uh the green i haven't done it with green juice but i'm gonna try it but just for parents watching right now listening you know you want to give your kid a treat you you buy those little popsicle makers super easy and it's cheap you make a little popsicle boom they got like seven eight grams of protein right there it's a I'm, done deal. I will try yeah. that. One, one more thing I want to add before we, we move to the shout out. I got to say, so you guys know, obviously we had a, a big thing in my family happen. Whole family got together. There was this nasty virus going around my family with a cough and a cold. People, everybody's real sick. Everybody got together. Everybody got super, you know, ridiculous sick. One of the reasons why my grandmother probably passed away, she caught it and turned it into pneumonia anyway. 
Mm. Uh, my kids got it. So my kids got the, the cough and the, and the, and the cold and all that. Um, I talked to uh, our partners at MP Hormones and I got something called thymosin alpha. This is from the thymosin gland. Uh -huh. It's a peptide that boosts immune function. Function. In fact, a little conspiracy stuff for you, Justin. Yeah. When COVID was happening, they were finding that thymosin alpha was, was helping people with COVID quite a bit and they made all the compound pharmacies stop making it. So during COVID, thymosin alpha, suddenly you couldn't get it. Yeah. Okay. But anyway, you can get it now. What is it? By the way, what is it? Just real quick, and not to go down the rabbit hole of yeah, conspiracy go, and, and turn into another this into an extra somebody. half hour. But at one point, okay, do do the people pull their heads of the sand, okay, and look back and, go, and look back yeah. at at the the things that yeah. were just somehow impossible to get or blocked intentionally during COVID. I yeah. mean, literally, go down the list, right? Was yeah. it ivermectin? Which ivermectin you could get anywhere, right? They, they, they made people. They made that almost impossible to get for a lot Z of packs and stuff like that. I oh. heard that they were like making those unavailable. Oh. Crazy, um, but yeah, glutathione so, was fine. It was a targeted one. Uh, NAC, NAC, NAC was cysteine. another targeted yeah. one, which was available as over the counter forever. Ridiculous. Yeah. So anyway, we did thymus and alpha peptide two days in a row, and nothing. Interesting. Not, everybody I around wanted us to sick. try that Nothing. one. So I've heard in combination with BBC too. That's a no real... thymus and beta. Is that's what oh, beta. okay. Yeah. So oh. I have thymus and beta. So thymus and beta is I'm to confusing the two. it, it okay. helps uh, with recovery for the for especially for the actin um, fibers in muscle. So you combine that with BPC. That's what they call the Wolverine stuff. That's the one I was going to do. Okay. okay so that's so this Wolverine is more for immune. So listen. So a day, health. sorry to interrupt yes. you, but now I selfishly want to know because what I'm doing right now. So on a day where I overreach, because that's happened a couple times, thymus and beta. Take them both all the time while you're doing this whole process. Uh, Th thymus and beta. Oh, that. come on. At least give I'll me do it for you. Leave it here. Now, is it not effective? Well, here's the thing though, like because I already know I won't take his, all that shit. But if I, if I really am sore, is it st not that useful because I haven't been taking it? Do it's I way more effective if you're consistent, but uh, it'll still help. Okay. It'll still help. Leave it here. I'll give it to you. It is Thym here. You combine thymus and beta with BPC. They call that the Wolverine stack. Mm -hmm. It's the most... Uh, I don't know. I have never taken anything peptide wise that has felt like that. My skin changes, recovery changes. Uh, I feel like I'm like I'm more youthful. My recovery is way yeah. through the roof. But thymus and alpha is different. Thymus alpha is for immune system. Okay. And what they what they recommend, what some practitioners cool. will recommend. Not me. I'm not a doctor. Is that like the VIP? Because I heard no. about that as one. That's a whole. Two, that's a different. It's a whole one. different. That's peptide. different. One. Okay. But uh, thymus and alpha. What practitioners will recommend is you, you at the first instance of getting sick, you take a large dose of it. And then it makes a big difference. Okay. So Jessica and I, nothing. Everyone else, everyone else. Cool. Sick. Yeah. Except for us. Shout out. Uh, I was going to shout out our buddy since you brought it up. And I also saw that he gave us a plug in one of his recent YouTube videos, which was so crazy to me. Oh. You had just brought him up. And I'm yes. like, oh, I love him. Uh, our buddy, King Keto, uh, which is Brandon Carter. Love him. I do. He's I just, hilarious. Yeah. And I, you know, he has a, like people like, okay, we meet a lot of people like that are you know, famous on social media, YouTubers, whatever, or even just famous in general. And many times when you meet these people, they're fake. That's this whole facade, this and that. Uh, he's a real ass dude. And his, uh, his, like he has like his, his like persona or whatever that he uses to promote like his business and everything like that. And, but when you're in person with him, is it very much so a very real dude and a good dude and a much smarter guy than he plays? He plays the. He's not just much smarter. Favorite, yeah. He's yeah. very smart. Yeah. I love that. He's very smart. I love, he's very well read. Yeah. yeah. And he, he understands he, investments. He understands. Yes. I mean, he's, pretty much anything he talks about, he's very, very intelligent. Smart guy. And he, yes. and, but he play he plays it. He kind of plays the like. Like uh, he's funny and kind of. Yeah, like, yeah. 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 Tongue and in cheek, joking. dummy, yeah. dummy guy, kind of, but he's very, very intelligent. Very, very, and he's cool. Good, good dude. And. So shout him out. I, we I don't think we've we formally shouted him out on the podcast. I know we had him on the podcast a long time ago, but we've since then become friends and stayed in contact. And I've been wanting him to come back so we can catch up just on live business. He's a father too, uh, and so uh, yeah, he's, he's a good dude. Yeah, he is. He's a, he's a, he's a funny follow too. So if you're not following him, check him out. King Keto on Instagram. Element is an electrolyte powder. You add to your water. There's no artificial sweeteners. No sugar. And it has the right amount of sodium to fuel your workouts, give you better pumps, make you feel good. Look, here's the kind of person that should take something like Element. Are you a keto dieter? Do you have a low-carb diet? Or do you eat only whole natural foods? In other words, you don't eat a lot of processed foods. And you work out, you sweat a lot. 
you'll probably benefit from supplementing with Element. Go check them out. Go to drinklmnt.com forward slash mind pump. And on that link, you'll get a free sample pack with any drink mix purchase. All right, here comes the show. First question is from JNA4BS. If my workouts are good and I'm still progressively overloading and getting stronger, does that mean I am not truly in a calorie deficit? No, 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 no not no, necessarily. Explain that, explain that question to me a little if bit. If I'm getting stronger uh, and I feel good, does that mean I'm not in a calorie deficit? No, not necessarily. Yeah. Um, don't judge a calorie deficit by the fact that you're getting that weaker. You're getting stronger. Yeah, weaker? Yeah, so yeah. yeah, like like a calorie deficit doesn't guarantee you're going to get weaker. In fact, if you change workout programming, you get better yeah. with your exercise technique. And also early on the routine back yeah. again, right? Like right now, I would guess that I'm actually in a deficit because how low calories I am, yet I'm getting stronger yes. because I haven't done anything. So yes, in fact, this is like this is a beautiful place to be if you are in fact in a deficit. Oh, and yeah, you're getting stronger. You can only hope for that. I, the only way to know if you're in a deficit or not, besides expensive metabolic testing, uh, would be to see whether or not you're getting leaner. Am I getting leaner? Am I is my body fat percentage going down, or am I losing weight or gaining weight? But uh, but no, you're you're. You, that's a good point to actually right there, Sal. Too there's a, there's also a possibility you're in the Goldilocks zone yeah. where your yep. scale weight is staying the same. And you are losing fat and you're also building muscle, but the weight is staying the same. Or so, what's happened to me before is I gained muscle, didn't gain any body fat and got leaner yeah. as a result of, of the extra muscle. So what you don't want to do, here's the danger when I hear this, when I read this question, yeah. the danger is that somebody says, oh no, I'm not getting weaker. That means I got to cut my calories more. No, yeah. no, 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 no. no. Yeah. Getting weaker is not a good sign. Uh, it's never a good sign. Now it sometimes is inevitable especially if you're really advanced, then you go into deficit, you're going to lose some strength. That's just kind of what happens, in which case you look at your strength as a percentage of your body weight. It's kind of a better gauge. But no, this does not guarantee you're in a, uh, doesn't mean you're in a calorie deficit. I, yeah, I love, I love whoever chose this question for this reason, because this is an example of where people will overcorrect and they may be in this perfect spot. Right. Mm -hmm. Like you may be, it, and psychologically that's difficult, right? Because you, maybe you're in a calorie deficit, you're trying to see yourself lose body fat and your scale's not moving, you're not getting weaker. So then you think, oh, I must be in a surplus still. Mm -hmm. And but and then you go out and, and then you do a bunch of cardio or you cut a bunch of calories to, and you overcorrect when you actually may be in the perfect spot. And mm -hmm. so before I would, one, I have the rule of, I always, two weeks in a row of yeah, right, uh, analyzing yeah. this, right? So I wouldn't base this off of one week snapshot of how I felt this week. It's like, let's run it another week, see how I continue to feel and see if I notice any visual change or notice any physical change in the, in the workouts. And then if I'm still not sure, this is where I'm gonna go body fat test and go see how it compare, you know, compares to my baseline. And then that's gonna make my decision, but, but don't overcorrect for sure. Next question is from Rodeo for the Lord. What is a good whole food snack to eat before an early morning workout? I typically eat breakfast after, but have been getting nauseous working out fasted. Okay, so a couple things. You could try electrolytes. Sometimes that helps with the nauseous feeling, but I had clients like this. I had some clients that uh, they, they had to eat something before they worked out. Otherwise, the performance I, I'm suffered. Not, I'm that person. You're like that, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm like so here are, the, here are the two things to consider. You can add a third thing, but really it's two things. Uh, eat some protein and make sure whatever you eat is very easily digestible for you. So something that you just ease is goes down easy and is easy to digest. What you don't want to do is eat a big meal and then you feel like you have digestive issues and you go to work out. That'll make it not so great. Now, the third thing you can add is some carbohydrates. Most people need both proteins and carbs in a, you know, quote unquote, pre-workout meal uh, to, to feel better. So two other strategies that have, have worked for people too is um, – one, having like something very easy, digestible, like a protein shake first thing on your way to the gym or whatever, wherever you're working out, that's an option. If that's too close to your workout and that bothers you, that then we get rid of that idea. The other thing that you can also do too is backloading your carbs and calories the night before. So backloading is where you load up majority of your calories. Have a really big and, dinner. Yeah. So you eat lighter breakfasts, lunches, uh, and then at dinner time, you that's where you calorie load. So that in the morning time, your body is still running off of that big mm. dinner that you had the, the night before. And sometimes that solves it. So those are, I would, I would play with a all shake those. can sometimes work too, cause it's yeah. easy to digest. You yeah. Just have a shake that's what I, I mean. That's why me, my yeah. first suggestion would be that cause it's the least radical change. Uh, but it's funny about this too, is there's such a huge variance. Huge discrepancy. <laughs> yeah. Like people. I prefer working out fasted in the morning. I yeah. prefer it. I just feel better. 
Um, whereas most people are not like that. Most people need to have a, some food, uh, you know, an hour or so before, before they can work out. Hey, real quick, sorry to interrupt you. Look, we have a sale this month on some programs. We have a beginner program, Map Starter. It's 50% off. Then we have a bundle that's different. It's called the Starter Bundle that includes our most popular programs. That's also 50% off. So if you're interested in that, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. The next one is from Summer L. Wainwright. If you're not hitting your protein goal, will creatine still help you build muscle? Okay, so yes, creatine will always help you build muscle, but let's put things into context, okay? Uh, hitting your protein targets is like a stick of dynamite. Taking creatine is like a firecracker. So in other words, if you're not hitting your protein targets and then you go decide to just take creatine, like you're going to be way better off taking a protein supplement or hitting your protein targets in terms of muscle. Protein is going to make you build way more muscle than creatine will. Okay, so I hope you're not trading one for the other. That being said, in pretty much any situation, uh, creatine is going to help uh, with the muscle building process. Yeah, I guess I, I guess I would want a little more context. Meaning, I would want uh, what is your goal? Like, is your goal? Are you? Do you? Did you set a a high protein goal? Did you set a just a moderate protein goal, or are you not even hitting your essential protein? Because then that really matters. Oh, right? that makes a huge difference. If you're not even hitting your essential protein, then I don't give a shit about creatine. You're not building yeah, no muscle. Yeah, you need it you. Matter. It's, it's essential for a reason. You yes. cannot. Uh, you will not flourish. Yeah, your body it, will not yeah, function. Just ain't gonna happen. So to me, I would want a little bit more like because. And then you could also be like, hey, I've heard you guys talk about high protein, and so I've really set a goal to be you know one one and a half times body weight, and, and I'm not hitting that goal time, and so I'm also taking creatine. I'm like, oh yeah, for sure, hit some creatine with that on top but, of that, get lots of benefits. But just give an example. If I had a client that came to me and. Uh, let's say their their target body weight was 120 pounds, right? So 120 grams of protein would be what we would aim for. And we looked at everything that they were eating and they were eating 70 grams of protein. And they came to me and said, Sal, uh, I want to make more gains. What supplement should I take? And I have to answer with a supplement. I can't just tell them to eat more protein. It's going to be protein powder. Yeah. Like hands down, like creatine won't even touch what the protein powder will do in that particular scenario. So hitting a protein target is far more important uh, than supplementing with creatine. Yeah. Next question is from Garth Cahill. Getting into powerlifting to eventually compete in the raw classic division, should I already start lifting with knee sleeves, a belt, and wrist straps, or should I wait until I have some arbitrary weight before starting to use them? If you're going to compete... Yeah, if you're competing with it, use them. Practice with them yeah. often. There is a skill, especially to using a belt. Like if you never train with a belt, like Justin never wears a weight belt. Okay, if he went and maxed out with a squat and put a weight belt on, it's because they don't fit. He would. <laughs> <laughs> they can't hold me in, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Too I mean, much man. There's, a, tr there's plenty of belts that fit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's be honest, it's if, a lie. Yeah. If 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 so, Justin never wears a weight belt. Okay, I'm using you as an example because it's a good one, right? He never wears a weight belt. He goes and maxes out with squat. Let's say he does 405. Uh, then he puts on a weight belt. He might add 10 pounds to a squat, mainly because a belt increases stability, but also because he doesn't ever practice with a weight belt. Now, had he practiced with a weight belt, he his squat would go pounds. from 405 to 435, 445, yeah. right? Yeah. So practice with the tools you're going to compete with because then you'll learn how to use them. And it even changes, in some cases, someone's technique. You'll even find people change their squat stance does. and technique based off of things like shoes now, and, and, and wraps. Do you, yeah, because this, this, I actually honestly don't know how I would answer this. Would this person uh, have any benefit to not using the the belt and straps for like the first like two kind of like war, warm up sets, and then once they get into working and heavy loading, then going to it, or would you recommend like wear it all the time? I would wear it every time you're practicing your com competitive lift because your technique changes. Even warming up, your technique changes. Put a belt on, changes core stability. It changes how you stabilize. It changes your technique. It changes how muscles. Yeah, the recruitment activate. process is is definitely different. So I feel, I feel like that contrast, you know, might not be as beneficial as like even if it's just you know during your warm up sets. Like I feel like at least then to the firing sequence is going to be very similar. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, that's just how I would approach it. I would just, you know, it's if if this is something I'm competing in and I'm going like real heavy and intense with it, like yeah. I want it to feel just like it felt. Uh, as yeah. I was like really gripping and, into like, it. It's, it's and this a, is so splitting hairs, by the way. What you're saying- I know, exactly. It's, I know, I know. But I mean, it's, it, the reason why I asked is because so I, I wasn't a power lifter. 
Um, but I definitely use the the advantages of of the bell. And so, and my logic behind what I would do, which is I would deadlift and, you know, back when I was using a belt, I'm deadlifting 500 plus pounds, right? I can get up to that. When I, I didn't put the belt on though, until I got over 400. Well, you and, had a balanced and, and, approach. You were, you were, you were more about, you were trying to get stronger, but you also have the trainer idea, yeah. I, I mentality. Okay. You know, mm -hmm. um, but if you're competing in powerlifting, like you're, the more it's, you, it's a sport. The more you use it and get used to it, the better you are. You want to get really good. That, that at, makes it's sense. like an extra appendage. Yeah, like, that, that makes sense. Plus the belt you used, uh, you know, you and I both use similar powerlifting belt, but uh, have you ever used a, um, a hinge belt? I think it's called a hinge belt or the other one walks in. Oh man. Like they get real, like you, it's a skill. It's a technique yeah. to learning how to, some people put a belt on, they can't even squat properly because yeah. they don't know. Uh, you know how to use it properly. I've been using a belt since I was a kid. So it feels like, um, you know, second nature. But you can feels like your bikini underwear. <laughs> so comfortable. So comfortable. Yeah. You see him squatting it, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I use both. When I wow. Squat. That's not true. But hey, look, to take it a step further, now this is raw. He's competing raw, which means he can't wear a squat suit or anything like that. But if you look at powerlifters who wear squat uh, you know, uh, squat suits or bench shirts and then compare their technique to raw, there's a difference. You look at powerlifters who squat in suits. And their stance is white as hell. Yeah. Because they're maximizing the use of the suit. Same thing with bench press raw versus bench press Elastic with the you know, energy help. They're all they're using it's it's a it's a it's a tool that you're using. But again, we're speaking specifically to the person competing in powerlifting. If I'm talking to the average person, my advice typically is don't use a belt at all. Yeah. And then if you're like a weekend war, you you work out, you like to hit those maxes, you want a little mix of both. That's what I used to do. That's what I do, Adam. I, I mm. work up to top sets, then I put the belt on. Yeah. But until I do. I'm beltless. All right, I know you liked that episode. If you did, check this one out. 30% body fat. For men, this is way too high. This is actually a bit high for women as well. So in today's episode, we're talking about how you can go from 30 to 10. What is 10% body fat? This is when you have a visible six pack. Can you go from 30 to 10%? Yes, it's possible, but not if you guess along the way. So we're gonna talk about how you can do that in today's episode. Now there's a huge range, right, of like body types. Yeah, you know, some people can run uh, a little bit heavier uh, and or a little bit higher body.